One of my favorite video topics to cover is new slicer features. While we've seen more than our fair share of hardware and firmware improvements, it's incredible just how big of a difference good versus bad slicer settings can make. New features allow us to do things like get cleaner prints, print faster, customize our models, and effectively dial in our machines with optimal settings. They impact the largest number of users, and thanks to a few companies and the community, won't cost you anything to upgrade. If you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you know that my favorite and daily driver is Orca Slicer. I'm always keeping a lookout for updates, and with 2.2 reaching Beta 2, I wanted to cover some of the exciting features on its way. In this video, we'll be diving into Orca Slicer 2.2 to look at what's coming and how these functions work. So with all that being said, and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. With over a decade of experience, PCBWay provides reliable, high quality PCB prototyping and fabrication with super fast turnaround times. In addition to PCBs, they offer CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. I recently used their SLM printing for a 3D printed tool head, and the results were fantastic. Whether your project is big or small, PCBWay has you covered with order quantities from five to 10,000 boards. Use the link in the description to get a $5 credit towards your first order today. Before diving in, as mentioned, Orca Slicer 2.2 is currently in beta version 2. Actually, in the process of editing this video, the first release candidate is now available. This means you can download it to play around with and even begin using it right away, but there could be some bugs. Generally, I run both the latest stable version as well as the latest beta, so I can swap back and forth as needed. First up is the new flow test calibration called YOLO. The existing calibration method for flow test tuning has you print two different passes. The first has a wide range to get you within a ballpark of what the correct flow is for the material you're tuning, and the second helps you to refine it by running a plate of flow ranges with much finer increments. While this method works, if your rotation distance or E-step values are set correctly, in most cases it's overkill unless you're printing with a really unique material. With the new YOLO method, you're given a narrower range that should cover the majority of use cases when dialing in flow for a new filament. This is a nice quality of life improvement and will help tune filaments even quicker than before. There are two versions of YOLO, one being the recommended and the other perfectionist. Perfectionist contains a few more flow rates, but the recommended one is what I'll be using and would suggest most use. Next up is Adaptive Pressure Advance. For anyone not familiar with Pressure Advance, we have a full video covering the tuning process. In summary, it reduces oozing and blobbing caused by extrusion pressure that would otherwise be uneven due to the accelerating and decelerating with each travel move. This is normally tuned per filament, and filament color, nozzle sizes, temperature changes, Bowden tube length, and even acceleration speeds can affect the value you want. The issue is that even within a single print, you're running multiple acceleration values depending on the feature being printed. We've settled with good enough, but being able to adjust this during a print would be far more effective. This pull request was first submitted in the beginning of June by Igianakis and takes accelerations and volumetric print speeds into account when creating the model used for your print. There's a pretty detailed write-up in the pull request that I'll have linked in the description for anyone interested in diving into all of its technicals. Currently, this method needs manual calibration, requiring you to run at least six PA tests for the filament you're tuning, covering a range for the lowest and highest flow rate you'll be printing, as well as the slowest and fastest accelerations you're using. Taking down these values, you'll input the optimal PA value, along with the flow rate and acceleration used into a text box under filament settings. Then, slice your file like you normally would to have Orca Slicer input the correct pressure advance into your G-code based on the upcoming volumetric flow and accelerations. There's so much more to cover with this, but it's really exciting to see even just the beginning steps. While I don't see myself running this for all filaments, it makes a lot of sense for any filaments that you run on a regular basis. 
Who knows, it may just be a matter of time before we get a more automated version of this or even a fully automatic way of tuning these different values. Either way, I'm excited to see where this goes. The next thing I wanna to touch on, which is a big part of this release, is new features and compatibility for multi-tool head printers. With IDEX printers and tool changers becoming more common, it only makes sense that slicers will need additional functionality to take advantage of those machines. Orca Slicer 2.2 now allows users to define IDEX and multi-tool head printers. This is based on Prusa Slicer's multi-tool printer support, which is the beautiful thing about open source slicers. Now you can assign features based on tool head, automatically preheat the next tool head based on timing, set idle temps and temperature variations for ooze prevention, and my personal favorite, mix different line widths within a single print. As someone who's played around with a handful of IDEX printers over the past few years, the slicing portion has always been the most painful. Having the ability to slice for a larger diameter nozzle and line width for infill and smaller for the outside means stronger parts, quicker printing without taking a hit to quality. This is massive, and while IDEX printers and multi-tool head might not be as common as, say, single extrusion 3D printers, it's only a matter of time before they come down in price and become more available. Having these tools in place will let you take advantage of the benefits that a multi-tool head printer offers. Next, we have a port of Cura's multi-material interlocking feature. This was released in Cura version 5.3 and is great for creating functional parts out of two materials that may not otherwise be compatible. For anyone who hasn't seen John Tech's recent video, he combines a wide range of different filaments together using the Prusa XL and runs tensile tests to see how good the layer adhesion is between them. While some materials form a fairly strong bond, when possible, adding a mechanical bond unlocks new possibilities for combinations. To use this feature, take two objects and assign different filaments to them. Then select them, right click, and choose assemble. In the multi-material tab on the left hand toolbar, under advanced, enable use beam interlocking. Now, when you slice the file and scrub through the layers, you can see the interlocking pattern that was generated to bond the two materials together. In addition to these features, there are some other multi-material improvements and quality of life upgrades. These include per object skirt and draft shields, support for pellet printers, duplicate current plate with objects, move plate to the front, which will be really handy for multiple plate complex projects, a new bed type for cool plate with texture to be used with things like BQ's cryo grip, along with a host of new printers, profile tweaks, bug fixes, and language updates. As always, I'm blown away with the sheer number of people helping to contribute to this project. Once again, as I mentioned, when I started making this video, Orca Slicer 2.2 was in beta 2, but during the recording and editing process, release candidate 1 is now here, and with the track record of Orca Slicer, I imagine that means that the full release is going to be just around the corner. And that has been Orca Slicer 2.2. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that I gave you an idea of what to expect and maybe some things that you're excited to play around with. Links to the GitHub release page are in the description for anyone that wants to hop over and take a deeper dive or download 2.2 for themselves. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.